Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. I'm Steve McGrath, and for the first time in Beyond the Helmet history, I'm pleased to welcome back a guest, our first, second time <laughs> visit from Marcus Ogden. Marcus, thank you for breaking that barrier for me, and thank you for taking the time today. Hi, right, Steve. How are you doing today, man? Thanks for having me on. I appreciate you taking the time. Things are well, and I'm sure things are going pretty well for you. And I say that because, you know, I always see you on social media. It, you're someone that has promoted success and getting better. And you don't just do it through your writing. Of course, you know, you had a, you know, a, a nearly six-year career in the NFL. You've started businesses. You you, you do all these things. So you, you, you've walked the walk, and now you're helping other people do it. And that, that's why I really wanted to have you back on because, you know, we talked – right before the success cycle launched. And that, of course, is your most recent book. So now that we are able to, almost a year to the day, 363 days since the book's been released, man, I just wanted to jump into what has that been like for you since the book's gone live? What's been this last year like? Steve, the book's been phenomenal. It's been a way to help us get our message out to people. It really is something where we talk a lot about ambition, drive, hard work, as a matter of fact, we have a speaking job coming up next month, uh, February 20th, that's a Saturday, for Western Governors University. They're the largest online university in the country. They have about 125,000 students that enroll each year. The average age is 35. And one of their big mission statements or slogans is ambition never rests. And it's kind of cool to be able to tie that back into our book because the first part of the success cycle is ambition. And I feel it's going to really help people to understand what it's like to create your own goals, to set goals, to have drive, be inspired to work through obstacles. And again, we talked about this before the show, 2020 with COVID threw us for a major loop. It was not easy for us to pivot and readjust because as a book, it's out on the road if you're not doing things or you're not talking about it or getting out in front of people, it's really hard. And the book sales did take a hit because we weren't able to go to live shows like we were and have people buy books and all that type of stuff. But we did let it deter us and we kept working towards the whole purpose and the whole essence of the success cycle. We were ambitious, we made some new goals, we were driven, we were willing and able to work through all the BS that you know, COVID brought. And we were hard working, we focused on ourselves and not the competition. So we really tried to live the essence of the success cycle in 2020. Now, I bought the success cycle and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm not just saying that to, to help, um, you know, toot your own horn, um, but I actually was surprised. And this was nothing against you, but I, a lot of times I read something and it's just very general in terms of advice and what to do. But you really broke kind of in a step by step, get down to the granular level to assess what you really need to do and, and how to set goals in a way that I thought resonated in a way different than many other things I'd seen. So I actually um, really did appreciate the book and uh, I'm sure that you've gotten a lot of great feedback from it. Yeah, it, it has. And what's been really fun about the feedback, Steve, like you just said, it's a lot of action step driven feedback where it's not just a practical, you know, knowledge only book, which is more theoretical we don't believe that giving people theories is good enough because as a speaker, if you just talk in stories and or in theories by itself, it won't have the same impact on the audience because they won't know how to actually put into their own life to drive actionable steps for success. So I really appreciate this feedback because it's what we've worked hard for and what we've worked through trying to make sure that in our speaking, both in person, and then of course we went virtual a lot this year or last year, and we're still virtual a lot this year. We actually spoke for Mutual of Omaha virtually yesterday, got great response from them. We have a job tomorrow for Goldman Sachs, virtual for them, doing a webinar presentation. And then on top of that, my client Red Gold, who is the largest tomato company in the US and they're the fastest growing three times their closest competitor. They hired us last year as a consultant and they just hired us officially yesterday to renew their contract for a year. And it's great, but we've had to pivot because everything we've been doing, Steve, for the last 
you know, going on what? Almost, you know, 12 months has been pretty much for the most part virtual. And, you know, I, I checked out marcusogden.com, you know, per usual, as I would to, for any, you know, interview that I'm about to do. And I noticed a night and day change from where this was before we had our first conversation. I mean, it really emphasized the webinars, the testimonials. You certainly had to overhaul the site. But can you just talk a little bit about how, right, to almost echo what you do in the success cycle? Can we break this down a little more on a granular level? Like, how did you actually make the pivot? You realized that you had to go virtual and it had to be more of a digital communication with people because the the face-to-face just wasn't going to happen. How did you actually get tactical to make the most of the situation at hand? So what we did was we, when our client Red Gold got us to be their consultant, Everything with them was Zoom because they were all over the country. Their salespeople were in every, not every state, but most every state working different regions. And that's what we were, we were coaching three of their groups. One was their food service group. One was their retail group. And the third was their retail leadership group. So because of that, we had to get comfortable with doing presentations and slide decks on Zoom. We had to get comfortable with being on camera. We had to get comfortable with actually having our client base as best we could have their cameras on. And we really learned a lot with Redco. We learned how to, in the beginning, we did a lot more talking, you know, I won't say to them, but kind of just, you know, talking like we were a keynote speaker. And then right around the six month, four to six month, four or five month point, we realized that having it more interactive where we talk about some things and open up to discussion and have them start to have ideas. And what we saw was the groups started getting more engaged. We saw the barriers of not wanting to speak as much go down. We saw people who were in the beginning a lot very timid, not wanting to talk, open up and start talking and being free and putting out ideas. And again, Red Gold in this last year has made a huge jump. They're 35% of our nation's catch up. So you can either do private uh, private label, which means that a company like a Kroger's, a Walmart will buy Red Gold catch and put their own label on private label or public branded, which means the Red Gold label is on the actual catch up. If you go to like a public grocery store, a Kroger's, a Walmart, you know, a lot of those ShopRite, Piggly Wiggly, a lot of those places, their generic, you know, their generic, you know, private label ketchup that you think is their ketchup is going to most of the time be red goals. Got it. So what it sounds like then is, you know, again, very similar to the success cycle is sort of um, testing what you're doing, figuring out what you could do better for, for you to ultimately make a pivot. And you know, just speaking on the word pivot, right, we're talking a little bit about what 2020 had been for you as you turn your focus to 2021 you know the the book at some point it cannot no longer be the emphasis of of how you move forward so what's the focus on now as you continue to grow your brand as a speaker coach so we're going steve more to the automation different types of products so we have a couple different platforms we have one on our website which is geared around you know, success like principles, you can pay for, you know, $7.95 a month or $14.95 a month. So $7.95 month, you have access to just our videos. And in the $14.95 month, you have access to the videos and our closed Facebook group. We just launched that about a week ago. We're still in beta testing. We're working out all the kings, all that kind of stuff. We're going to try to get that going full throttle, probably February, March. Then we have the one where we work with a group out of London called Elevate Production. And that one is on pivot solely. That's $9.95 a month. You have access to all the content, not just our content, but content anybody on the platform. And it's great because we really break down pivot each letter. The P is poised. The I is inspire. The V is victory mindset. The O is observing. The T is tactician. We break those down in a much very detailed action step, step step-by-step process to help people who are struggling with how to pivot wherever they are in their life. And we have another one working with a guy out of Vegas on mindset, three keys to unlocking a peak performance mindset. And we will eventually do one on sales. So what we're really trying to do is create those lower entry level price packages and platforms and content 
So people who can't afford, you know, my $15,000 an hour fee in live or my, you know, but sometimes it goes as high as $30,000 an hour or they can't afford my, you know, $5,000 coaching or my $75 coaching or, or $15,000 a year, because whatever, whatever package you buy, depending on how much, you know, you know, really access you want to me, they can get something and still get their life started in the right direction. You won't get everything, but getting something is better than getting nothing. So it's a great thing for people to have to have and get them going in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. And certainly sounds a little more affordable than Masterclass, uh, which is a little, definitely a little bit more expensive. So Elevate is a kind of like a smaller version of a Masterclass. That's exactly what it is. And it's more boutique. The guys are out of London. And it's, again, it's, it's affordable to create self-sustaining people and self-sustaining individuals that truly want to master a craft, but may not be able to afford the higher ticket pricing at this time. Definitely. Now, you know, one of the things that I really wanted to get into with you is, you, you know, you do so much and you do so much in a way to help other people get better. So I, I wanted to sort of get into how do you personally get better? I, I mean, obviously, you have to some extent live out what you're what you're preaching to people. So just starting with the general idea of goal setting, you know, how do you approach, you know, heading into a new year, what you want to do, or maybe it's more broadly than that, you know, how do you think five years out, where, where do you want to get to and, and how you should go about getting there? So I always look at, okay, where am I now? And I look at, okay, what do I want to accomplish this year? And then I break things down by quarter. So I look at different things. I always analyze things monthly, but I have quarterly goals. I work with my clients on the same thing. What three main action steps do you need to accomplish in this quarter, quarter one, to stay on track for quarter two? Quarter two, stay on track for quarter three. Quarter three, stay on track for quarter four. If you have an annual goal, but you're behind by 80% in quarter one, can you get to that goal? Sure you can, but it's a lot of work and it's a lot of catch you have to do. So I tell people all the time, the way I do for myself is I look at things by quarter, but I'm always analyzing things weekly and monthly and making sure it stays in alignment with my quarterly goal. And if that's the case, then I know I'm on the right track. But it all comes down to managing my time, making sure that I'm delegating tasks to the right people, the right team members, and that everything is getting done to the highest degree that's necessary to help us have massive success and help our clients have massive success as well. Got it. Now, in our first conversation, you know, we obviously talked about your brother because it was more of a football-based conversation and how Jonathan really paved the way for you to help you sort of get as good as you could through your senior year of college and, of course, through the NFL. So you know, do you have a business version of Jonathan, someone that you've you know, maybe looked up to, kind of helped you get your bearings? Because I know that, obviously, for us to have this conversation, like I said from the top, you've done a lot. You've learned a lot of this by your own way of going through your journey. But who did you lean on to kind of, or maybe even now, who, who do you lean on to sort of help you think through things and provide any type of guidance? So I have a phenomenal team. My business partner, Don Wiener, my, uh, my website, SEO person, he runs all of our automation, George Saad. We have our great videographer, Donovan Barnes. We have our copyright and trademark person, Albert Harden out of Cleveland. And that is our core group. We have other people around, have a great accountant, have a great bookkeeper, we have a great setup. You know, we're looking right now and we're interviewing some marketing and branding people to see who we want to work with there to help get more exposure around the brand, the book, the courses. But we're trying to set the foundation with everything else and get our four key people, core people all you know, in the line, which we are. And then what I also do is I have a coach who is my mentor, uh, Brad, who is out of uh, Philadelphia. Well, he's out of the Pennsylvania area. We went to a program at Penn State that the NFLPA put on back in 2018. And he was the one giving me a lot of guidance, a lot of leadership, a lot of you know, thought process. And he's the one that I lean on now to check ideas. What's, does this make sense? Does that make sense? And because of him, the knowledge that I have as a speaker, a consultant, a coach, if I didn't have him in that program I went to in 2012, there's, I'm oh, sorry, sorry, that program I went to in 2018, excuse me, I went to that 2018 of uh, March, I would not be where I'm at today. Absolutely no way. That's awesome. 
Now, are you a reader at all or a podcast listener? Yeah, what do you I, sort of? I, 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 I listen to a lot of podcasts. I'm getting up more into reading, you know, uh, you know for sure. Uh, I'm trying to do more. I read a lot of my clients' books uh, that they write. Like one of the books I read about uh, from the battlefield to the board about my client, Bo Bravo, was a good one. He used to be in special operations. And then now he's still, then he used to work in the White House for George Walker Bush and for Barack Obama as their chief communications and HR officer. And now he's an entrepreneur that I coach. So I try to really read some of my clients' books and also just some books in general. And I'm definitely a podcast guy. I'm on a lot of podcasts and I really enjoy people kind of giving me that whole process of writing stuff and you know, putting out content and hearing them from there. So now there obviously when I asked that, that there's a balance between just enjoyment it just doing something for a little mental relief and trying to actually learn and possibly get better. So what, which do you air towards when you're listening to a podcast? Are you trying to just find something that's enjoyable or, you know, like what do you normally listen to? Oh, I'm always trying to get better. I'm always trying to take people's knowledge, experiences, you know, their stories and learn from them. You know, if I want personal enjoyment, I'll go watch a movie. I'll go to the gym. I'll go play poker. You know, if I'm going to listen to a podcast, it's, I mean, I won't say it's business mode only, but I'm really trying to hear things and get better because I can take content from things. I can slice things up. I try to listen to people who have really been through the struggle. Um, most people that I know that are successful have struggled in some way or some capacity. So I'm always trying to listen to those people, learn, you know, and just, you know, take different content, different ideas, and just really branch out to have more vantage point to help me get to a better speaker and better consultant and coach. Love it. Now, uh, again, going back to because I listened to our last conversation coming back on here, uh, two themes when talking just through uh, business and success in general were accountability and consistency. Th those two words came up a ton. When you just think generally about you know what you've done, what you help your clients do, are, is there another pillar? Like if, if those are, let's just call those one and two, the most important traits that you need to have. When you think about what it takes to actually get it done, you know, what, what else would you add to that list just off the top of your head for the most important pillars needed? Uh, if I, I was going to, I would say communic effective communication with your team. Nobody can build an empire by themselves. And I would really say authenticity slash vulnerability, being able to be real with people and be the real authentic you. What you see is what you get from me. Like, you know, you know, I used to really fear on putting on social media, you know, I have tattoos or people might think that I'm, you know, my past life was who I am today and all this stuff. And I was like, well, you know what? My tattoos were the reason I stopped drinking so much because of the path I was on, I probably wouldn't be here without them. So the hell with it. And so I started putting them out there more. And I saw people that were like relating to me and like, okay, this is the real Marcus. And yeah, it is. And so I'm not your prototypical speaker, right? I don't look like a prototypical speaker. If there is a so, such thing as when people think that there is. So for me, it's about being authentic, vulnerable, sharing my story, being real, getting out there. And like you said, marketing the business. And I, I call this inbound traffic. I do something with you, Steve, one time on a podcast and I'm done. And then once you put it out there, people, it can bring us inbound traffic potentially for business or for networking. You never know. But I tell people all the time in this business, if you can't have effective communication with your staff, and if you don't have authenticity and vulnerability with people that you either work with or clients you serve, who you're trying to work with, they're gonna see right through you and they're gonna think, okay, another person is full of themselves, they think they know everything. I'm just going to go right on down the road. And really and truly, that's exactly what I work on today is always just being real with people to the best of my ability. Yeah, I, I love it. I, yeah, I certainly you know, see that. And it, it's one of the reasons, obviously, that you know, I try to you know, keep in touch with you as often as you know, we kind of can as we both do our own things. And then obviously have the chance to catch up with you uh, here and now. Uh, but, you know, Marcus, I know we're starting to run uh, up against it in time a little bit. So um, Super Bowl thoughts, man. I saw I saw you post some love for Tom Brady. So um, do you how do you think this one's going to go? Um, did you enjoy the games over the weekend? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's always fun to watch football. I, I thought that Green Bay was going to win and I thought Buffalo was going to win. So I would have to say right now, you know, I would love to see. 
Mahomes and those guys win two in a row. I think that would be awesome. I don't think that I don't know if that's ever been well. I think Tom won two in a row, but you know, I think that you know it's it's a it's a potential setup for a major brand with the Chiefs. I like Tom Brady a lot. You know, phenomenal football player. But I'd like to see, the, uh, and also Lee Steinberg is a personal friend uh, of our family. Now, Lee does have two clients playing the game. The, uh, Ron, uh, uh, Ronald, uh, Rondell Jones, the running back, is Lee's client. And then, of course, Patrick Mahomes is Lee's client. So i like to see Lee's client at the quarterback do well. I think Rondell Jones is a good running back. I think he's got, you know, he'll be around for a little bit. Uh, but I would like to see Mahomes. And he's just a good guy, man, between what he does in Kansas City. Where he, he's now a part of the, of the Royals. I mean, he just seems to have, from very young age, 25, he's got a really good head about him. And I think he is a, could be a shining star to help people maybe fall back in love with football, potentially. I think a lot of people respect Tom but don't like him because he's such a winner. So but Mahomes is not there yet. So I think what he does with the community could really open up some doors for the league. So I'm hoping that they win it. So uh, it could just be some good marketing for the league and for Mahomes and of course for my good friend and client, uh, good friend and uh, and uh, Lee's client, I mean, my good friend and Mahomes agent, Lee Steinberg. And shout out to Lee for doing good by Patrick's father, which is why he's in a position now to work with a generational talent. I mean, it just shows do right by your clients and look what happens down the road. You know, he's a living example of, you know, what it means well, to be know, successful. I didn't, know, I didn't know my whole father played in the NFL. Baseball. Ah, I didn't know that. I did not know that. I didn't know Lee was his client. I was his agent. That makes that makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, I Marcus, I just got one last one for you. I got to squeak it in before you jump. I love to end on best piece of advice. We talked about some pillars of success, but when you think about 2021, where we are today, you know, what's, what's the best piece of advice we can end on? I would tell people pivoting is changing your strategy without changing your vision. I sent you that link, Steve, for the pivot program you put in the show notes. It's $9.95 a month. People pay me, you know, thousands of dollars to coach them. They pay me, you know, upwards of you know, between fifteen and thirty thousand dollars for the hour for an event live, even like five grand for the hour, Steve, doing it virtual, right? This is nine ninety-five a month or eighty-nine dollars for the year. I would tell you, pivoting is about changing your strategy without changing your vision. Learn how to pivot. If you don't want to go to our, get our course, that's fine, but still learn how to pivot because if you don't know how to pivot. When life hits you in the face with adversity and difficulty, which it's going to do, you won't be prepared for it. We had a 30% increase in revenue last year during the pandemic, 30% increase in business. We pivoted. If you want to learn how to pivot, you need to have someone help you understand how it goes. It's a five-step process and then pivot to get to your end destination or your finish line and or beyond. It's not difficult. It's just time consuming and it needs to be done in a way that you do it efficiently, that you don't rush. We had to pivot in 2020 with our brand and I'm blessed to have a phenomenal team around because without them, we wouldn't be here. But that pivot program, Steve, is a very cost effective avenue people that want to have success, go there and be able to spend something, I mean, spend something very reasonably to get the information they need to succeed. So go uh, check that out and go from there. All right. Well, we'll post it in the notes, change up the tactics, but keep the vision the same. Marcus, thank you so much for taking the time. All right, man. Talk to you soon.